Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Ordinary Council meeting agenda for the uh, Tuesday, the 13th of October 2020, uh, commencing at 2 pm via Zoom link and live streamed on Moonshire Facebook page. First of all, I'll like to do an acknowledgement of country. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we are meeting, and pay our respects to their elders past, present, and emerging, and the elders from other communities who may be watching today. Recording of council meetings. Please note that today's meeting is being audio recorded. This recording will be uploaded to Council's website and will be accessible by the general public. By participating in and addressing those present at the meeting, you can send to any information you disclose, including any personal information or sensitive information being recorded and uploaded to the website. I'll now read the prayer. Almighty God, we humbly beseech your blessing on the Council, direct and prosperous deliberations for the welfare of the people, of the Moin Shire. Amen. Uh, apologies, there being no apologies. Public participation, uh, no public participants today. Um, Mr. Mayor, I'd like it noted that Hamish Cummings' email uh, was refused, the council refused to have me or anyone else read it out. So I'd like that noted in the minutes. Thank you. Excuse and that a, he will receive a response from the CEO. Correct? Yes, thanks, Councillor Duke. Response. Yep. Will that response go into the next month's meeting? Mr. Millard? Uh, yeah, the response can go into next month's meeting. Thank you. Right, okay. Well, just for the record, thank you, everybody. Okay. Uh, do we have any declarations of interest for any items on today's agenda? No declarations of interest, thank you. Uh, adoption and confirmation of minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, do we have any questions on any detail from the previous meeting? Uh, one question, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Dugas. Um, the response from the meeting before to Mr. Cummings, should they be in the in the minutes? Uh, Mr. Miller might be able to help with that. Um, I'll take one note, notice. They generally should be where um, a public participant has um, um, made a submission and and presented at the council. There's generally recognition in the minutes. I think that's in our governance rules. So I'll follow that one up, uh, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Mr. Miller. Uh, any other questions on the minutes from the previous meeting? Okay, seek a mover, please. Councillor Parker has moved, seconded by Councillor Wolf. Councillor Parker, any comments? No comments, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Wolf. Uh, just there an accurate record of that meeting. Thank you, Councillor Wolf. Okay, councillors, all those in favour? Carried 7-0. Okay, uh, item one on the agenda, the annual report for 2019-2020, which should be introduced by the Director of Corporate Community Services, Mr. Kevin Ledden. Thanks, Mr. Ledden. Thank you, Mayor and Councillors. Um, this report puts forward the Council's annual report for the 2019-2020 year. So it really is the the report card of council annually um, back out to the community. As you'll note in the report, it has been lodged with the Minister for Local Government. Uh, we're still operating under, under the provisions of the 1989 Local Government Act for the annual report requirements as we transition to the new act. Uh, once it was lodged um, and we had received um, Victorian Order General uh, unqualified audit reports, they, they are inserted, lodged with the Minister, it's been advertised also as required, so we could bring it in before uh, this Council uh, in its final, final um, Council meeting. As the report sets out, um, the annual report includes as required the report of operations of the Council, um, audited performance statement and the audited financial statements. Um, and I think before I go much further, the Chief Executive may touch on just some of the highlights out of that 1920 
um, annual report, Mayor. Uh, thanks, Mr. Ladin. Uh, Mr. Miller. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, Councillor, it does, um, does give me great pleasure to present to you um, this annual report. Um, the annual report is generally prepared in accordance with um, um, the rules required by, uh, by government. So I think in a, I guess one of the things that's most pleasing about it is, is the scale of the uh, work and achievements that we've completed under uh, the term of this council. I think um, during the really difficult challenges of COVID, every staff member has assisted us um, in achieving the results, which are generally pretty positive in the, in the uh, annual report. It certainly identifies that, um, you know, we're in a strong financial position, um, you know, really strong capital works program of approaching $20 million. We are maintaining our existing assets above 100%, which is important, so they're not slipping. Um, those assets are being maintained and improved. Um, and I think our strategic planning in many, many areas, uh, including township planning and so on, has, um, has been really strong in the past year. So uh, at the same time, we've also, um, we are also complying with the new Local Government Act requirements and its implementation over the next period um, and have met our obligations uh, to that regard. So I guess from the staff, um, on behalf of the staff, on behalf of the executive and myself, um, I really do wish to thank uh, this council for your time and commitment and your direction, um, particularly over the last year, but also over the last four years, um, and wish uh, those retiring council as well. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr Miller. Okay, before seeking mover, do we have any questions on the annual report? Councillor Dugas. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Look, reading the recommendation, it says that the council notes and considers. What happens to accepts and endorse? Yeah, I mean, Mr. Um, yeah, good question, Councillor Dukas, but um, that is actually the requirement out of the Local Government Act 1989. There's probably another reason why it's been rewritten to make it a bit more current. So that, that will change. And in fact, in the new act, there will be no requirement to lodge the annual report with the minister, but the mayor will be reporting back to the local community. So it's a little bit outdated, the wording, but that's what we have to stick to at the moment. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay, I'll seek a move. Yes, I just thought somebody would have some. Uh, yep. On page 14 of 142, under major achievements, um, one of the lines is transmission line undergrounding. Well, that happened at One Wind Farm. I wouldn't say that's a major achievement. There's, there's an achievement on, on the other transmission line and it's got wind farms. So could someone tell me what our major achievement is in relation to wind farms? Yep, Mr. Millard, happy to take that. Um, I couldn't comment on that particular issue, but I would take that on notice, Mr. Mayor, um, around the specifics. Um, I guess the annual report covers all aspects of council's 100 plus services. So um, I would be happy to take that one on notice and respond. Thanks, Mr. Miller. Um, okay, any further questions on the annual report? All right, thank you. We'll seek a mover, please. Uh, Councillor Parker, are you a question or would you like to move? Uh, just one. Uh, on page 32 of the report, with the key result three, it talks about the fact that um, we support and encourage renewable energy. If we have a look at dot point four, Um, yet in recent council meetings, we have said that we don't want any more wind farms in the Shire. So I'm just wondering how that relates, equates, how we can put both of those things in. It seems to go against what we've moved recently, although it's in our council plan. Mr. Ladin to respond. 
Yeah, thank you. I'll start and um, the chief executive might follow up. Um, but really, yeah, I think my, my answer to, it's a good question from Councillor Parker is, this started out at four years ago when this council developed the council plan. Um, and that now is clearly conditional on, um, on the advocacy that the council has done. So I'd suggest that will change in the new council plan. Mr. Millard, anything to add? Okay, thanks. Any further questions? We'll take a move in now, please. Move for the motion, the annual report. Councillor Parker is moved, seconded by Councillor Bryant. Councillor Parker. Um, I might save my comments until the end, if I may. Thank you, Mayor. Councillor Ryan. You're on mute there, Councillor Ryan. I simply congratulate staff on the putting together of this document. I have nothing further to add. Thanks, Councillor Ryan. Uh, any other councillors speaking to the motion? All right. Councillor Parker, in summary. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you know, uh, as Councillor Ryan said, uh, the staff have put together a very comprehensive document. And I do note the contribution of the quarry and the caravan parks to council revenue as part of that document. And I think that's two business enterprises that the council should be very proud of. Um, as councillors, we have been warned against influencing the election in anything we say or do at this meeting. So I'm simply going to make some observations. I will not comment about the observations. Um, and I'll leave it to other councillors and people uh, listening to or watching the uh, meeting to make their own decision. Um, I did find it interesting, although I understand what Mr. Ledden has said, but interesting that the minister received this uh, report before the councillors got to consider it. I, I do note that it uh, meets statutory requirements, so it is compliant. Compliance is a very interesting term in our council. And it deals with all of the necessary items uh, required. It's the um, things that are not in report that I would like to make some observations about. Um, firstly, in the, on page nine, it talks about strategy and youth plan, but there is nothing about youth in that comment or in any part of that section. Um, it um, says all of the things that it needs to say. It says in the, in the vision at the very beginning that Moin Shire will be a vibrant, livable and prosperous community. People are diverse, resilient, happy and feel safe. Um, if we have a look at the photos throughout the document, there are photos of the four senior positions on the council staff. There are no comparable photos of councillors present. There are photos throughout the document. One of those photos has a female in it. There's no photo to show um, the Indigenous part of our council, nor the youth, nor disability. Yet we're, very, we're saying that we're diverse. We, we have a vision of diversity. So I'm a little concerned that we are giving lip service to a number of things, but they are not being reflected in the annual report, which I see as a major um, document in the council. So I'm a little disappointed, I have to say, but uh, as I only have to note the report, I'm quite happy to do so. Okay, thanks, Councillor Parker. Uh, now time to vote on item one, the annual report. All those in favour? Motion is carried, 7-0. Thank you. Introducing item two, the financial report. 
Mr. Ledman again, thanks. Thank you, Mayor and Councillors. Um, this is the three month finance report. So it compares our actual to budget results for the three months to the end of September. And again, whilst we're in caretaker, the, the only requirement under local government act or regs is to actually at least put up a three monthly. So um, that's why we put this forward. The report sets out that our operating budget is traveling favorably, um, but I guess we, we need to take some caution. We're, we're still in COVID. We have been, or the council has been quite conservative with its revenue projections um, as a result of COVID. Uh, to date, they haven't been significant impacts, but we now know that we've also um, just inherited a flood. So um, the true extent of that is still being assessed by our teams. Um, so what the cost to our infrastructure um, and whether there's any natural disaster funding will unfold. Um, so we'll be um, following up that and reporting back to council on that. So that's uh, an uncertainty at the moment. Our capital work program. So with the rollovers that council approved last month, the target is now 27.8 million. Um, as Mr. Millard mentioned, we delivered 20 million last year, which is significant programs. Um, and we've got $5.5 million uh, spent for the first three months of the current financial year. So still um, a high level of expenditure and, and a whole range of projects um, that the teams are working on delivering again for, for this financial year. Um, so that will be challenging. Um, there are no carry forwards um, in this uh, finance report. So I'm happy to take questions, Mayor, but um, otherwise the recommendation is that the council receive the um, September finance report. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Lennon. Open up to questions, please. Councillor Lockett. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just an update regarding a couple of capital works programs, um, projects, sorry, is the Puffery Bowls Club and also MacArthur Public Toilets Upgrade. How those are tracking, please. Uh, Mr. Millard. Yeah, thanks, um, Mr. Mayor. Um, Councillor Lockett. Um, at the first quarter, I know uh, Mr. Greenberger uh, um, is an apology for today's meeting uh, in the infrastructure directorate, but um, he's certainly been reporting internally to uh, the executive that strong uh, gains have been made on all the projects. In fact, um, because we are able to adopt a budget in a timely manner, um, they've really hit the ground running. So all the major projects uh, underway and continuing from last year are making really good progress. Thank you. Any other questions for the finance report? Councillor Smith. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a general question to Mr. Ledden. Uh, just in relation with the flood damage and the ongoing COVID virus, is there it? Do we do a mid-year review if we think it's serious enough that it could be impacting our budget going sort of in after Christmas? It's just a general question that with flood damage we won't probably know for another few weeks but is there a any way we do a half year review or something in light of the major uh, problems of COVID and the floods thank you three me Councillor Smith um yeah good question sometimes uh, we we do a major review usually at the six month mark I think the beauty um within council in taking in a in having monthly reviews with the officers before these reports are prepared and then reporting into council is timely. So it's, it's not let go to, to three months. So there's pretty much constant review each month. But uh, yeah, as you know, we're, once we assess, I think the flood impact will be the big one. It's the big unknown at the moment. So once the teams assess how, what the damage is and what sort of maintenance or any reconstruction that we're looking at and whether or not that's going to attract any natural disaster funding, I think that will that will be the potentially big impact on it for this year. So we'll certainly be coming back in the in the monthly budget up or finance reports updates uh, once we have information on those. Thanks, Mr. Ledden. Any further questions? Okay, we'll seek a mover, please. Mover for item two, finance report, Councillor Lockett. Seconded by Councillor Parker. Councillor Lockett. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, despite fires at the start of the year, pandemic throughout the year, recent floods, we're still looking in a really good financial position. Well, yet to be proven, I suppose, with floods, but 
again shows the uh, excellent uh, financial management that the team has been doing for a long period of time and continue to do so. Um, so I'll put it to council for their support. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Councillor Lockett. Councillor Parker? You're on mute there, Councillor Parker. The report reflects the resilience of our uh, shire. So I agree with Councillor Lockett. Thank you. Any other councillors wish to speak to the motion? Okay, Councillor Lockett, in summary. Uh, yep, yeah, that was the word I think I was trying to search for. <laughs> Resilience. Thanks, Councillor Parker. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thanks, Councillor Lockett. All those in favour of item two? Motion is carried 7 0. Item three, Audit and Risk Committee minutes. Mr. Ledden, thanks. Thank you, Mayor. Councillors, these are the minutes of Council's Audit and Risk Committee. So, as uh, we normally presenting to council. It looks at a range of topics um, covering off uh, risk, audit and compliance. Um, happy to take any questions on any of those, Mayor, but it's again, I think a, a pretty comprehensive agenda that that committee um, attends to. So it's a good update for council. And um, the recommendation is that council um, confirms the minutes. Thanks, Mr. Ledden. Do we have any questions on anything in those minutes? Okay, do we have a mover, please? Seeking a mover for item three, Councillor Ryan has moved and seconded by Councillor Lockett. Councillor Ryan? Um, nothing really to say about it. There, it's a procedural motion and uh, the audit uh, minutes uh, shows that uh, we are adhering to uh, good governance and uh, they keep a check on what we're doing. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Ryan. Councillor Lockett. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As Councillor Ryan has pointed out, a procedural matter, but a very important one and good to see everything's in tip top shape. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any other councillors wishing to speak to the motion? <sighs> Councillor Ryan to summarise. Uh, put it to the vote, Mr. Mayor. Councillors will now be voting on item three on the agenda. Audit risk committee minutes. All those in favour? Carried 7 0. Okay, we move on to item four on the agenda a, uh, a special item retiring councillors' acknowledgement. Uh, as, as has been publicly stated, we have two councillors, Councillor Wolf and Councillor Parker, have uh, decided not to. Renominate for the upcoming election. Um, I, I have a few notes uh, just to summarise on their involvement with council over the past 12 years, and then uh, happy to throw to other councillors, all the retiring councillors, for comment as well. So, on Councillor Parker was elected uh, November 2008, has attended 169 council meetings in total. Uh, key interests being environment, coastal councils, waste and recycling fire emergency management and of course representing uh, her hometown of Mortlake as well as the wider shire. Uh, represented Moyne Shire across Victoria and interstate uh, including South Australia, uh, Adelaide, Mount Gambia, Queensland Redcliffe conferences, Tasmania, Hobart, ACT Canberra, WA, Rockingham, New South Wales, Ballina and Kai Amma. Uh, had been involved, Jill has been involved Councillor Park has been involved in uh, several committees over her time on council, including the Mortlake Rec Reserve Committee or DC Fair and Noble Committee, Mount Shadwell Quarry Committee, Dundonald Wind Farm CEC, Hexham Wind Farm CEC, Mortlake South Wind Farm CEC, and Mount Fines. Uh, that one's not actually correct in there. Salt Creek Wind Farm CEC, Barwon Southwest Local Government Waste Forum, Warrnambool Special Development School, Belfast Aquatics, Municipal Fire Prevention, and the Municipal Emergency Planning Committee. So uh, I'd just like to congratulate Councillor Park on her 12 years uh, as a councillor and service across uh, across those various committees involved with, but as a councillor in general. And now I'll just uh, touch on Councillor Wolf. 
but was sworn in in April 2009, attended 163 council meetings. Key interests from Councillor Wolf have been the Port of Port Ferry, sporting clubs, roads and roads, as represented more in Shire uh, in Harndorf, Mount Gambier, Canberra, Alice Springs, just to name a couple. It's also been involved in the committees of the, the Port of Port Ferry Board, uh, South Can Park, Audit Risk Committees, Port Ferry Lifeboat Committee, Hexham Wind Farm CC, Willetook Wind Farm Proposal CC, and Woolsorp Wind Farm CC. Also, congratulate uh, Councillor Wolf on the 12 years as service to the Moreen Shire and uh, wish both Councillor Wolf and Councillor Parker very well in their retirement from council. That is it from me as Mayor. Other councillors wishing to provide any commentary? Councillor Ryan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, acknowledge the work that both uh, councillors have done over the last 12 years. I'd like to make special mention of Councillor Parker in her involvement and being on the executive of a national body, which was the Australian Coastal Councils uh, Conference. I had the opportunity of attending um, a number of those conferences around Australia with Councillor Parker and I witnessed firsthand the uh, respect that she had uh, received from uh, fellow councillors from all around Australia. Uh, Port Ferry, um, with our uh, coastal erosion, we, we were able to play a, an important role in uh, conveying um, to other councils around the, the coast of Australia what we were doing and um, that was uh, mainly through the work that uh, Councillor Parker had done. So on representing our council on our national body uh, was quite an achievement and mm -hmm. one she carried out very well. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Councillor Ryan. Uh, Councillor Lockett. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I also wanted to yeah, congratulate both councillors um, you know, for the last four years in particular, because that's when I've been working with them both. But, I think Councillor Parker again regarding the coast, um, you know, coming from and representing Mortlake, but your interest in the coast has been massively appreciated from the town of Port Ferry because your knowledge and um, skill set regarding the coast has been phenomenal, and particularly um, the waste management as well. Been a great advocate for the environment and for sustainability across the Shire, so it's been greatly appreciated. Um, I'm going to have to scroll across to find <laughs> Councillor Wolf. Oh, there he is. <clears throat> um, also, I'd really like to thank um, Councillor Wolf for when I first got on the council. He was a real guiding light about, I was like, ah, oh, what do I do with my tax and this and that? And, you know, I had millions of questions. Um, and he was really supportive about running for council to start with. But also, once I got on, I'm like, oh, <laughs> what do I actually do now? <laughs> he was a real, real guiding force. So, really, really it's been a, you know, um, yeah, fantastic last four years with both councillors and yeah, really, really commend you both for your excellent work for your communities. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Lockett. Any other councillors before we go to the two retirement councillors, any other councillors wishing to add comments? Okay, uh, Councillor Parker, would you like to uh, have, add a few comments yourself? Thanks, Mayor. You scared me when you said I'd attended 169 council meetings. That's pretty scary stuff. Um, seen lots of changes over the 12 years. I think that Councillor Wolf will make a similar comment. Uh, I think we have achieved quite a bit, particularly in the area of capital works. There's been a lot of money spent over the 12 years and the, um, the state of the, the shires, um, townships and um, villages, I think are much better than when we first came onto council 12 years ago. Um, I think one of the things that we've dealt with, we've all dealt with over the time is the, the way the Gold posts uh, keep moving. We seem to have different responsibilities now to we did 12, even 12 years ago as far as uh, imposed um, 
governance and imposed um, compliance from the state government. Uh, it seems to be a lot more bureaucratic red tape than there was, even though they talk about removing red tape. Um, there are some things that uh, were there when I first started council that still haven't been um, completely um, achieved or th there are still things pending. Uh, one example being the Avenue of Honour in Mortlake but um, things seem to move slowly in some areas of governance and that's not just at local government um, areas. Um, one thing that I am concerned with and um, still needs to be done I think is to get our heads around compliance issues particularly with regards to, to wind farms just as to I've read a number of compliance reports as we all have um, but to me, the emphasis seems to be on the report rather than the compliance. And I think we really, there's a long way to go in that at this particular point in time. However, um, there have been lots of achievements and improvements. Um, we have to work together. Each of us only has one vote, so it uh, doesn't always go the way we wish. Um, so there are some times you, that you're disappointed, but overall I'm very satisfied with the achievements that we've done. So thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Parker. Well spoken. Councillor Wolf. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'll be very brief. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, the councillors and the staff for their efforts, for their companionship and support throughout this term and the previous two terms. Uh, it's been, it is a fantastic organisation. It is progressive, it's moving forward. I think Mourn is well respected throughout the state. Um, we've had our challenges, whether it be coastal erosion, fires, floods, COVID. COVID's been across the state, but we've had some unique challenges. We've got through them. Our integrity, I think, is without question. And that was certainly evident when we handed back a million dollars offered to us by the federal government for um, drought relief. Um, there was a lot of um, calls received throughout Australia uh, in that generation of what morning unanimously decided to do that. We've heard, we've heard uh, today in the annual report some of the achievements that have occurred this year, and there's been massive achievements occurred over the, the last 12 years. Um, the councillors, as Councillor Parker said, are very conscientious with their vote. They value their vote, they vote on merit, and there's been some, some great achievements throughout the Shire um, that's been put in place by the support from the staff and the voting of the council. I, Group would like to thank the people of mine who have supported me in the last three elections, um, and I hope that I've represented them as expected, uh, as best as I, I can. Time to move on, um, look at other interests, and so forth. Let new blood come into the, the Shire, uh, which is in a strong position. And I wish all the, uh, the staff the best for the future, and the councillors that are. Uh, candidates for this next election next term. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Councillor Wolf. Uh, very well said. Once again, thanks very much to Councillor Wolf and Councillor Parker for their 12 years of service to Moyne Shire and Moyne Shire residents and ratepayers. Uh, I congratulate them and uh, wish them very well for their future. Uh, that does conclude the October meeting for the Moyne Shire Council. Uh, thank everyone for tuning in and attending and uh, I wish uh, all the best for the new council at the November meeting. Thanks very much.